It would have been out long ago. And if anybody watched Peter Strzok testify over the last couple of days, and I was in Brussels watching it, it was a disgrace to the FBI, it was a disgrace to our country, and you would say that was a total witch hunt. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. We have also seen the benefits of cooperation. In the last century, our nations fought alongside one another in the Second World War. Even during the tensions of the Cold War, when the world looked much different than it does today, the United States and Russia were able to maintain a strong dialogue. But our relationship has never been worse than it is now. However, that changed as of about four hours ago. I really believe that. Nothing would be easier politically than to refuse to meet, to refuse to engage, but that would not accomplish anything. As President, I cannot make decisions on foreign policy in a futile effort to appease partisan critics or the media or Democrats who want to do nothing but resist and obstruct. Constructive dialogue between the United States and Russia affords the opportunity to open new pathways toward peace and stability in our world. I think that the, the probe is a disaster for our country. I think it's kept us apart. It's kept us separated. There was no collusion at all. Uh, everybody knows it. Uh, people are being brought out to the fore. Uh, so far that I know, virtually none of it related to the campaign. And they're going to have to try really hard to find somebody that did relate to the campaign. That was a clean campaign. I beat Hillary Clinton easily. And frankly, uh, we beat her. And I'm not even saying from the standpoint, we won that race. And it's a shame that there can even be a little bit of a cloud over it. Uh, people know that. People understand it. But the main thing, and we discussed this also, is zero collusion. And it has had a negative impact upon the relationship of the two largest nuclear powers in the world. We have 90 percent of nuclear power between the two countries. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous what's going on with the probe. There's no evidence when it comes to the actual facts. So we have to be guided by facts and not by rumors. Now, let's uh, get back to the issue of these 12 alleged intelligence officers of, uh, of Russia. I don't know the full extent of the situation, but the President Trump mentioned this issue, and I will look into it. So far, I can say the following. The things that, off the top of my head, we have an acting an existing agreement between the United States of America and the Russian Federation, an existing treaty that dates back to 1999, uh, the mutual assistance on criminal cases. This treaty is in full effect. It works quite efficiently. On an average, we initiate about 100, 150 criminal cases upon requests from foreign states. Uh, for instance, the last year, uh, there was an, one extradition case uh, upon the request sent by the United States. So this treaty has specific legal procedures. We can offer that the appropriate commission headed by, mm, by Special Attorney Mueller he can use this treaty as a solid foundation and send an formal, an official request to us so that we would interrogate, we would hold a questioning of these individuals who he believes are privy to some crimes. And our law enforcement are perfectly able to do this questioning and send the appropriate materials to the United States. Uh, Mr. President. Uh, would you please go into the details of possibly any specific arrangements for the U.S. to work together with Russia in Syria? Well, I guess I'll answer the first part of the question. We've worked with uh, Israel long and hard for many years, many decades. I think we've never, never has anyone, any country been closer than we are. 
Uh, President Putin also is helping Israel, and we both spoke with Bibi Netanyahu, and they would like to do certain things with respect to Syria having to do with the safety of Israel. So in that respect, we absolutely would like to work in order to help Israel, and Israel will be working with us, so both countries would work jointly. And I think that uh, when you look at all of the progress that's been made in certain sections with the eradication of ISIS, we're about 98 percent, 99 percent there, and other things that have taken place that we've done, and that, frankly, Russia has helped us with in certain respects, but I think that uh, working with uh, Israel is a great thing, and creating safety for Israel is something that both President Putin and I would like to see very much. Thank you. Uh, question for each president. President Trump, yes. you, you first. Um, just now, President Putin denied having anything to do with the election interference in 2016. Every U.S. intelligence agency has concluded that Russia did. What, who, my first question for you, sir, is who do you believe? My second question is, would you now, with the whole world watching, tell President Putin, would you denounce what happened in 2016, and would you warn him to never do it again? So let me just say that we have two thoughts. You have groups that are wondering why the FBI never took the server. Why haven't they taken the server? Why was the FBI told to leave the office of the Democratic National Committee? I've been wondering that. I've been asking that for months and months, and I've been tweeting it out and calling it out on social media. Where is the server? I want to know where is the server and what is the server saying? With that being said, all I can do is ask the question. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be, but I really do want to see the server. Uh, but I have, uh, I have confidence in both parties. I, I really believe that this will probably go on for a while, but I don't think it can go on without finding out what happened to the server. What happened to the servers of the Pakistani gentlemen that worked on the DNC? Where are those servers? They're missing. Where are they? What happened to Hillary Clinton's emails? 33,000 emails, gone, just gone. I think in Russia, they wouldn't be gone so easily. I think it's a disgrace that we can't get Hillary Clinton's 33,000 emails. So I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. And what he did is an incredible offer. He offered to have the people working on the case come and work with their investigators with respect to the 12 people. I think that's an incredible offer. Okay? Thank you. A question for President, for President Putin. Thank you. Uh, two questions for you, sir. Can you tell me what President Trump may have indicated to you about officially recognizing Crimea as part of Russia? And then secondly, sir, do you, does the Russian government have any compromising material on President Trump or his family? <laughs> President Trump and uh, well posture of President Trump on Crimea is well known and he stands firmly by it he continued to man maintain that uh, it was illegal to annex it we our viewpoint is different we held a referendum in strict compliance with the UN Charter and the international legislation for us, this issue, we put paid to this issue. And now to the compromising material. Yeah, I did hear th these rumors that we allegedly collected compromising material on tr Mr. Trump when he was visiting Moscow. Well, distinguished colleague, let me tell you this. When President Trump visited Moscow back then, I didn't even know that he was in Moscow. I treat President Trump with utmost respect, but back then, when he was a private individual, a businessman, nobody informed me that he was in Moscow. Well, let's take St. Petersburg Economic Forum, for instance. There were over 500 American businessmen, the high ranking, the high level ones. I don't even remember the last names of each and every one of them. Well, do you remember, do you think that we try to collect compromising material on each and every single one of them? 
Well, it's difficult to imagine uh, another nonsense of a bigger scale than this. Well, please, just disregard these issues and don't think about this anymore again. It would have been out long ago. And if anybody watched Peter Strzok testify over the last couple of days, and I was in Brussels watching it, it was a disgrace to the FBI, it was a disgrace to our country, and you would say that was a total witch hunt. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.